So I've been a freelance graphic designer for just around four years now, and today I'm going to be showing you five useful items that you should have in order to be a successful freelance graphic designer or design student. Let's get into it. Welcome to Topspec, your one-stop shop for tech content. And before this video begins, just know that a lot of people's process for design is very different, but I just thought that I'd make this list for things that I recommend and things that I wish I had known about when I started freelancing. By the way, we upload tech reviews, comparisons, and tutorials every Monday, so if that sounds like your thing, feel free to hit that big red subscribe button below. Also, any item that I mention in this video will have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first item on this list is actually entirely free and this is something that is often overlooked by many starting designers, and that is inspiration. Now, there's many different ways that you can find inspiration to start a new project, um, but I highly recommend using something like Pinterest and creating a new mood board and adding in different logos that inspire you and maybe color schemes that you would wanna use and just images and different things that you think has the same energy of something that you wanna produce. However, don't spend too long on this step of the design process because oftentimes beginning designers will start comparing themselves to professional artists with decades of experience and this is something that I would do when I was first starting out and it's a big mistake it often gets yourself demotivated and it's just kind of counterintuitive for what you actually want to do. Every designer has their own style and everyone starts somewhere so you got to keep that in mind when you're looking for inspiration. Also, don't become too inspired from other people's designs because you don't want to get in hot water and start just straight up ripping off something that somebody else made. All right, on to the second item. So the second item that I would recommend is some kind of dotted sketchbook. So you might be surprised hearing that because you might think graphic designers work almost entirely on the computer. Why would you need some kind of sketchbook? Well, that isn't entirely true. I myself find it extremely useful to have a sketchbook because it allows me to get my ideas into paper and start getting the creative workflow going and kind of get some ideas and what I think would work well and what wouldn't. And then if you're particularly interested in logo design, I highly recommend a dotted sketchbook because it kind of has like a grid that isn't too in your face, but it's there if you needed to use it. Uh, you don't have to use it, but it's there for if you wanted to make a logo that is very evenly spaced and mathematically based. That's how I do a lot of my logos. I have them on a grid so that way I can easily just recreate them from my sketchbook into Illustrator. So the third item on this list is actually very much related to the previous item, and that is some kind of drawing tablet. So when you hear that, you might think of those videos on Instagram of those professional artists drawing on an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. And when you hear that, you might become sort of overwhelmed, but don't worry, there are much more affordable entry-level options. If you're on a very tight budget, I would recommend something like this, which is the Wacom Intuos tablet. Uh, there's no screen on it, and it just kind of mirrors on your monitor what you're drawing. So it's usually under $100, but if you're willing to invest a little bit more into a drawing tablet, I would recommend the Wacom One digital tablet. This tablet is similar to the Intuos tablet, but it has a screen on it, and it's not as expensive as the iPad Pro and it's strictly just used for drawing on it on your computer. Now a sketchpad and a drawing tablet pretty much have the same exact purpose because they're both sort of used for getting your ideas out onto paper, uh, but some people prefer to go the all digital route so that their sketching and their final production are all digital. I personally prefer to have a little bit of time away from the computer and sort of get my ideas out on paper and I sort of like using the actual paper option. That's why I haven't upgraded my drawing tablet into anything more special. But I do know that a lot of designers out there very much prefer the drawing tablet option. So if you're going to begin as a freelance graphic designer or a design student, you are going to need a computer. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, there's a good chance that you're a tech enthusiast, which means that you might already have a PC of a high enough caliber, but in the chance that you don't have a computer, here's a brief rundown of what to look for. So Adobe states on their website that the bare minimum to run Illustrator on a computer is to have eight gigabytes of memory um, with a recommended amount of 16 gigabytes, as well as having a multi-core processor with 64-bit support. If you're really strapped for cash, you totally could get away with having an 8GB computer, but having the 16GB of memory really will just make everything run a lot more smooth. You can have multiple projects open at once and maybe have multiple software. Like for me, I'm usually running Photoshop, Illustrator, sometimes After Effects, and Premiere all at the same time. So having the capability to do that with 16GB of memory is extremely important to me. So if you're in the market for a laptop right now, I'm going to leave a card in the upper right hand corner to a great laptop buying guide for creators. All right, so my previous recommendation was a laptop, and obviously that is a fantastic tool for graphic designers. In fact, it's actually a necessity for them, but depending on the laptop, it will have a pretty small screen, anywhere between 13 inches to 16 inches. So you're gonna want a decently sized monitor to blow up your work and to 
to see what exactly it is you're working on. If you intend to use your laptop for almost strictly just browsing the web and graphic design, I highly recommend a monitor like this. This is a 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor, which is great for design. There's a ton of screen real estate for you to use and it's just a very efficient way to get your work done. So you might have noticed in this video or in previous videos that I personally do not own an ultra wide monitor and that's just because I don't just use my PC for design and for browsing the web. I also use it for plenty of PC gaming and I find that using a 16x9 monitor is much more appropriate for gaming. Keep in mind, just because this isn't an ultra-wide monitor doesn't mean that it's small. This monitor right here is actually a 32-inch monitor, which means it is basically the size of a small TV. So if you end up going down the same route that I did, I highly recommend getting a monitor that's about the same size as mine, that's 16x9 and 144 hertz especially if you see yourself gaming on it. Anyways, those are five things I highly recommend for beginning graphic designers or design students. I personally really like making these design videos because I myself am a graphic designer, as you know, and I am also now a marketing and graphic design student. So if you would like more of these design related videos, feel free to leave a like on the video and let us know in the comments below. Other than that, I'm Connor and this is Top Spec. Thank you for watching.